30. The seekers on the eternal's path. August, exulting in her maker's eye, she felt her nearness to him in earth's breast, conversed still with the light behind the veil, still communed with eternity beyond. A few and fit inhabitants she called to share the glad communion of her peace. The breadth, the summit, were their natural home. The strong king sages from their labor done, freed from the warrior tension of their task, came to her serene sessions in these wilds. The strife was over, the respite lay in front. Happy they lived with birds and beasts and flowers, and sunlight and the rustle of the leaves, and heard the wild winds wandering in the night, mused with the stars in their mute constant ranks, and lodged in the mornings as in azure tents, and with the glory of the noons were one. Some deeper plunged from life's external clasp, beckoned into a fiery privacy in the soul's unassailed star-white recess. They sojourned with an ever-living bliss, a voice profound in the ecstasy and the hush they heard, beheld an all-revealing light. They reached the one self in all through boundless love. Attuned to silence and to the world rhyme, they loosened the knots of the imprisoning mind. Achieved was the wide, untroubled witness gaze Unsealed was nature's great spiritual eye. To the height of heights rose now their daily climb. Truth leaned to them from her supernal realm. Above them blazed eternity's mystic suns. Nameless the austere ascetics without home abandoning speech and motion and desire. Aloof from creatures sat absorbed, alone, immaculate in tranquil heights of self, on concentration's luminous, voiceless peaks, world-naked hermits with their matted hair, immobile as the passionless great hills. Around them, grouped like thoughts of some vast mood, awaiting the infinite's behest to end.